yeah, well, that's a, a definitely a long story from uh, Torino of last year. Um, I was struggling a lot just in the week uh, to get through the race. It was, you know, last year in the in that sort of spring season, we had a lot of really cold, rainy weather, and uh, Torino was the same. Um, and so there were many days, six, seven hours, that was just raining the whole time, and and I was just kind of started here and started just going down and down. And the the last stage was the time trial, so that was like my carrot that I was aiming for. And um, however, the the penultimate stage was, you know, one of the most difficult uh, parkours or courses, you know, that that the, the peloton has really ever seen. You know, people still talk about it this year as being one of the hardest stages that they've ever done. It's it's it was almost even harder than than a one day classic like Flanders last weekend, just with the amount of ups and downs. You know, we had to do this thirty three percent climb. You know, two times there. Were, numerous other other climbs that were 20 25 percent you know short but still when you're tired you just you can't it's it's impossible to make it up so I knew from the start that it was going to be a big ask for me to uh to make it to the finish with the you know with the gruppetto but I was you know I was pretty dead set on making it to that next day for the time trial so um we started and it was great weather and it was sunny out and immediately start uphill and um, right from the gun I'm already dropped and uh, then even worse suffer a mechanical and have to change my bike and the breakaway still hasn't gone so the field is going full gas and I am just already out the back with a different bike just uh, struggling from maybe 10k into the race and it was 209k I think total so I was like well this is going to be a long day. Um, however, with the help of Steve Cummings, I made it back into the into the main peloton, and from then just just kind of survival mode commenced, and um, and I got about 90k in with the main group until we hit this 30 some percent climb for the first time, and and. Uh, then it was groups of riders getting dropped, and I was thinking, oh, this is, you know, this is good. Uh, it's going to be a long day, but if there's a big group of us, we're all going to make it. And uh, the only problem was that uh, with 90K to go or 100-some K to go, we pass through the finish line. So there's, you know, everybody has their buses on each side of the road, and the non-time trialists, you know, they have no real reason to, to just ride another 110K. Um, but I, I wasn't even thinking about that. I was just kind of talking to the guys, and they're like, oh, we're going to stop, and we're going to stop. And I was like, well, wait, but what about, you know, finishing the race? <laughs> and uh, and I could have sort of pulled this whole group of, like, 40, 50 guys, and nobody wanted to finish the race. And I was like, dang it. And, um, and I just said, well, I'm going to do it. Maybe I'll catch a group in front of me. Maybe not, but... Uh, you know, I want to do this time trial on the last day. That's what I came here for. I want to do this. So set out, still setting out. But as I pass the finish line to go on this, you know, this last big loop by myself, uh, the cloud just kind of like, just like in a movie, the clouds just darken and it just starts to rain and the temperature drops like five, six degrees. And I'm just like, oh man, <laughs> this is not going to be fun. But I just kept going and and just kept riding. I had Fabio in the in the team car behind me, and um, just was was pushing on. And uh, the first hour and a half or so by myself was was not too bad. I was just riding. I could kind of see the race. You know, the helicopter. I was there. I was quite far behind, but I was, you know, still could manage to see that there was a race actually going on that I was a part of. <laughs> but uh, once I started to get really cold, um, I started to get pretty, pretty, uh, pretty dark, pretty sad. But um, you know, I started to think about, I started to think a lot about my dad. Um, he has Parkinson's. He's had Parkinson's since 2000, and you know, I've, I started to think of the kind of struggle that he goes through, just on a daily basis, uh, from waking up to 
taking a shower to just eating food, um, you know, and he's been, he's been suffering with this disease for 14 years now. And um, so I started to think, well, hey, you know, if my dad was out here and he had the chance to be perfectly healthy and be in my position, you know, 20 minutes off the back of one of the hardest bike race stages that I've ever done, he would, he would trade me for that position in a heartbeat. And so I thought, yeah, there's no way I can step off my bike. I have to make it to the finish line no matter what. Because I started to think about my dad so much that I was like, you know, need to honor him and, and, and need to honor just the sport and, and, and the fact that I signed up for this and, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to finish this race. And uh, so I just kept going and um, just kept pushing on. And it was a, a long, long way. There was a, a nice moment when I was coming down one of the numerous descents and I look over to my left across this kind of valley and I see like a, 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 about two kilometers worth of traffic on the side of this hill coming down. I was like, oh, that really sucks for those people. And then I realize as I get down for, <laughs> as I get down the descent that they are all stopped because of me because I'm the last guy in this bike race and the roads are still closed and I've got the broom wagon behind me and it's just me on the back by myself and all these people are just, their whole day has been delayed for me and I was like, oh man, you know, why am I doing this? But then I started to think back to my dad and I was like, you know what, these roads would be closed anyways if there's somebody else, so I'm gonna keep going and, and uh, finally made it to the finish, but I uh, was two or three minutes out of time delay. I was like 39 minutes down. Um, but by that point, you know, I, I knew it, the ride was less about trying to make it to the time trial and, and more about, you know, sort of proving something to myself and, 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 and honoring, uh, you know, my dad, cause I was thinking about him and honoring the sport and the race. So I wasn't too distraught, but I was definitely, uh, quite empty and, and got a bit emotional in the evening when I was sort of reliving the events. Um, but it's just a special, kind of a special memory to have and a special story to be able to tell your kids one day. And my dad has so many stories from his, from his racing days and they all involve him being off the back by himself or with somebody else and uh, just suffering through these epic monumental days. So uh, it's, uh, it's interesting because you can be I can be the last guy and I was all the way off the back and then that next weekend I got seventh in Milan San Remo so it's a strange sport that way. Well, um, I mean there's there's the guys that I idolize if I'm thinking about who I'd like to to trade spots with. Um, you know, like Boonin or Cancellara, but more than anything, I look at a guy like Peter Sagan and the ease that he kind of has at, with winning races, it seems. Um, he just somehow he can kind of switch on and, and commit to getting over really as, as long a climb as he wants to and make it to the finish and be able to sprint for the win. So when I see that, I'm like, that would be nice, a nice power to have. But um, I don't think too much about, about the other guys. I think I'm in a, a pretty sweet position myself. Um, I don't have much to complain about, and, and I know that I do have a, a big future ahead of me. You know, it'd be, It would be cool to trade places with Cancellara for this weekend and, and, and have, his, have his acceleration his, and, and, and his ability to read a race and win a race like this weekend, but you know, it's kind of getting getting to the end later stages of his career so um, I think I can get there just with being myself and uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that but uh, yeah if I could uh, just sprint away from anybody and do my own celebrations like Sagan that would be kind of cool but uh, you never know give me a couple of years don't know where I'll be Taylor, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Good luck for this weekend. Good luck for the rest of the season. And you know, I hope this is the first of many.
careers, uh, careers, interviews in your career. Yeah, sweet. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah, that's the one. Sweet.